as an attorney when we lost last year in August, we were talking about key success factors for um, businesses in Nigeria. And since that time, well, let me also say that this experience sharing session is part of the way LBS seeks to ensure that participants get best practices. And I just in time you've been here with us, you have been, um, you have, well, opened the a $1 billion plant in Ibese. You're planning to commission uh, the second phase of Obajana, which is the biggest cement plant in West Africa so far. Um, I think that uh, we all know that Forbes recognizes you as the richest man in Africa and uh, one of the richest men in the world. And of course, there are several other numerous awards. Well, seeing that you've been able to achieve so much, we felt that we should hear from you about the magic of thinking big and key success factors in business. So without saying much more, I'm going to ask Alaji to speak with us. So I'm going to speak, they will speak with us and we'll have the opportunity to ask questions. And afterwards, we'll have a photo session where different guests can take pictures with him. And then we have a cocktail where everyone can also continue with the one-on-one -on -one interaction with Alaji. We hope to finish by 12, 12.30. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, you know, uh, I think we're one of the largest conglomerates in uh, Africa. Uh, it wasn't really an easy thing, you know, we went to help. Even now we're still facing uh, issues, but you know, we're doing better than a lot of people. Uh, we're highly diversified in terms of products, portfolio. Uh, why we did that, you know, because before we were mainly only in food, and that's it, you know. But you know, business is like a cycle, especially you know, in a place like Nigeria where government uh, policies used to change uh, very often. Even now they do, you know, because there are two types of uh, entrepreneurs or business uh, men where uh, some of them. They rely fully on government uh, support. Some of them, they rely on purely hard work. Uh, the ones that I call, uh, you know, those that they fully rely on government support, you know, these are people that will always go to the government. And you know, they normally don't get to Abuja until the middle of the night. <laughs> they get into the villa and then they you know, talk to them to give them an import waiver on what somebody is producing so that they don't pay duties, they don't pay taxes, and you know, they just make easy money. And they cause quite a lot of distortions in terms of, uh, you know, somebody who is struggling. I know the hardest part of business in Nigeria is that, especially our type of business, once we arrive somewhere, the whole community, even the extended community, they actually let government go of their responsibilities. You know, they hold on to us in terms of roads, in terms of power, in terms of water, education, uh, including, you know, empowerment, you know, making money and whatever. So, you know, that's why sometimes, you know, the money you have to spend that has nothing to do with the business quite a lot. And you have to really do your numbers right, otherwise you might end up, uh, you know, should change yourself. And we focus on a lot of, uh, thank you, we focus on a lot of value-added uh, uh, this you know, where we want to use uh, local raw materials to turn them into something, you know, rather than Important, you know, because we believe we need to conserve the foreign exchange. Yes, today maybe we have 37 billion, but when you look at that 7 billion in terms of uh, the population that we have in Nigeria and also our test for imported products, it's not really a big sum of money. You know, we've been to 68 people who are now at uh, 34. And uh, you know, you see what we've been doing. Even when the going was good, we have already planned to totally almost become an export-oriented company 
by the year 2015. And uh, it is one of the things that, we, you know, you always have to think ahead. You know, in business, sometimes what is good today might not be good tomorrow. So you need to, you know, look at it. If you have the means, there's nothing really like diversification. You know, sometimes you do quite a lot of diversification, I mean diversification, and then you consolidate before you move forward. You cannot just keep expanding, expanding, because sometimes when you overexpand, it can cause a lot of uh, crisis also. So you need at least once in a while to consolidate and, uh, you know, go on. But, no, go back. But, you know, the, you can see already the vision of the company is to be a world-class uh, enterprise that is passionate about the living standard, the living standard of uh, the general populace and also high returns to uh, stakeholders. Our mission is to touch the lives of people by providing their basic uh, needs and then core values, customer service, entrepreneurship, excellence and leadership. In the early days, um, you know, when we started, you know, we started, uh, I started in 1978 and uh, when I came back, uh, from Cairo, I decided, okay, maybe I will just work a little bit, uh, you know, uh, with Fabi, and uh, decided, that, okay, maybe the best thing to do. Because normally in our own, uh, you know, family, they allow you to try, we try to encourage people to go on their own. And that's why, really, I don't think if I have uh, more than uh, two, two relatives, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, three, including directors that are coming from my family, both the from my mother's side and my father's side. I don't think, including myself, we are not more than four or five of us in the whole group. We try as much as possible to encourage people to go on their own and try their own love. But that's really a normal Nigerian. A normal Nigerian doesn't really want to work for anybody. That's how we say when you want to go and try his own uh, law. So we started, <clears throat> I started first and I was getting an allocation of just three, four trucks of uh, cement to go and sell per day. And uh, I was given an opportunity, given 500,000 uh, Naira, <clears throat> you know, to uh, use it as a type. So I had small money. Uh, the 500,000, uh, it sounds small, but at that time I think it was big money. You know, because uh, in 1978 I was very excited. The first, uh, the first car that I bought before even I started making good money in 1978 was Mercedes 200. And that Mercedes, what I paid was 5,100 Naira. You know, air condition fully uh, loaded. But that time there was no power steering. You know, <laughs> you know there was no power steering. But yeah, it was it. There was actually no. Uh, so that was how you know I started. You know, I'll be skipping, but you know, you can read. And uh, during that time, you know, we concentrated on uh, you know general goods. Why general goods? Because I mean, whatever that we lay our hands on in terms of import lessons. You know, there was import lessons before in Nigeria, mm -hmm. up, to, uh, 19, up to 1986, which was when General Bawinga came into power, he abolished the import lessons. But before the import lessons, uh, before it was abolished, you know, you cannot, as a business person, concentrate only on one product, because you might not get that license. But they will give you a license, the license is restricted, you cannot, you know, and uh, yes, foreign exchange is available at a point, but then at the same time, uh, you have to go and bid for the foreign exchange and buy. So, a uh, majority of these licenses, you know, um, they were not given to the right people. So, you need to go and get those, uh, uh, you know, people. But what we did at that time, so that we will not really be caught legally. You know, because uh, it, it wasn't transferable. We always encourage people. We would get our own. We also encourage people to make sure 
that uh, they have like an SVP. You know, just that particular company, they don't use it for anything. They go and apply for the license. Once they are given, they will now to be a fresh company. So we don't take a company with liabilities, you know. So we'll take that company, we'll go and also open our own thing. You know, so up to time, when they abolish the uh, import license, that is actually what helped us. And uh, it's not well. That was from that time we actually became number one in sugar, number one in rice, and uh, you know almost most of the commodities, baby food, frozen fish, were all number one at that time. But that was also a reason because majority of uh, the big business uh, moguls at that time, especially from the northern part. They were all uh, locked up by General Buhari. If you remember, you know, everybody was locked up. Uh, during Buhari, who are very lucky, I think was the only company that Buhari allowed us to go away with our rice. Because when Buhari took over, uh, majority of us, you know, in Poti, we had almost 13 ships of rice. The day that he took over, you know, I think two or three days later, he declared that, look, Rice must be sold at 36 naira a bag, you know, and the price was about 60 at that time. But we were lucky actually, he did not take our own, he seized 12 ships, we ended up uh, getting you know, our own. And the money that uh, we made was quite a lot of uh, money, you know, because yes, we made extra, despite the, uh, six, uh, despite the 36 naira price, you know, we sold at 66 naira. And what we did was that you know, somebody would have to pay us cash with no receipt for 30 naira. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, the uh, rest, you be, you know, you go and pay, you pay the 30 naira in the house in two days. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you, you will, uh, you know, then you go and uh, pay the official price at uh, our office in the house. And that was, you know, quite a lot of money. It sounds small, that naira, but that naira was, you know, was, was, was really big. So we did that, we went through that. Uh, lately, for us, what we did, we actually reinvested, you know, most of the money into the business. You know, we are not really sharing money or we are not really extravagant in terms of lifestyle. And we tried as much as possible to keep most of what we are making in in that uh, business. So I think it was 1997, um, you know, we had a retreat uh, with uh, at Anderson at that time, you know, which is now APMG. Um, the retreat, what we did was that, because, you know, during these years, up to 1995, there about, you know, we couldn't really turn around our money. We had actually so much cash we are just trying to see what we will do with money, really, at that time. Well, we don't really borrow money at all. We have never really borrowed. The first time we borrowed money was 2001. And uh, you know, at that time, what we tried to do was to say, okay, fine, how do we just turn around our money? And I think that was the time we tried a lot of parties. We bought, I mean, we, uh, we got a license uh, to give us money back. And instead of the normal six million, uh, six million uh, uh, naira as the capital of the bank, we started that bank with thirty million. You know, because our dream was to see that we have the most, the biggest, and also the most powerful, the strongest bank in the country, merchant bank in the country. 